A bit of breaking news to bring you now. The founder of that far-right militia group has been sentenced to 18 years in prison after being convicted of playing a role in the January 6th attack on the Capitol. Oath Keepers founder Stuart Rhodes was found guilty of seditious conspiracy in connection with the group's plan to try to keep then-President Trump in power. Alex Mellon, who covers the Justice Department for us, has been tracking the case. So, Alex, how significant is this sentencing, you think? That's extremely significant. I mean, the harshest sentence for any defendant charged in connection with the January 6th attack has just been handed down to somebody who wasn't even inside the building on that day. Uh, Stuart Rhodes, the founder of the Oath Keepers, he founded that group back in 2009. And it became one of the largest militia movements in the country over the uh, past decade. But after the 2020 election, when Donald Trump lost, they started moving towards the right in really kind of strong ways and started attending these protests where they were going essentially as, as a guise to protect um, businesses where riots were happening after the murder of George Floyd. But after the 2020 election, the Oath Keepers became um, more radicalized because Rhodes basically took to social media and, and encouraged his followers to reject President Biden's election. And what we saw then is what happened on January 6th, the Oath Keepers essentially coming to Washington and forming those two stack formations that we saw climbing the steps of the Capitol. And prosecutors made the case and a jury accepted it that Rhodes played a seminal role in rallying his followers to attack the Capitol and attack the seat of government on that day. And this sentence now, the harshest of any handed out to any January 6th defendant, really reflects what the judge who handed down the sentence said was his seminal role in being one of the primary organizers of the violence that we saw that day. So Rhodes addressed the court before a sentencing. So what did he say? Rhodes was defiant. He described himself as a political prisoner. He went on about a 20-minute monologue decrying the government's actions, basically saying that the Biden regime was targeting him um, politically. Uh, this was rejected swiftly, though, by Judge Amit Mehta, who handed down his sentence. He told Rhodes outright, you are not a political prisoner. You are here today because a 12, jury, uh, 12 jurors in D.C. found you guilty of one of the seri most serious crimes in the U.S. criminal code, seditious conspiracy. So he, he rejected this argument that was put forward by Rhodes. But we've seen Rhodes uh, appear on uh, protest channels from the D.C. jail, and I expect that after he, uh, you know, will report to prison to serve this 18-year sentence, that he'll still try and remain defiant uh, in hopes of maybe rallying people uh, to his cause to reject uh, the Biden administration. He's, he seemed more in his remarks to be poised to prepare for a, an incoming President Trump administration in 2024 with the hopes, as we've heard President Trump um, express his hopes that he might pardon some of the January 6th defendants. So he tried to uh, convey some common cause with President Trump in his remarks to the court. So do you think this plus the other convictions that we've already seen will impact how this group operates and, and other extremist groups in this country? Well, after the January 6th insurrection, the Oath Keepers largely splintered. They were no longer really centrally organized by Rhodes as he became under the guise of, of federal investigation. Um, we're right, right now, the Oath Keepers don't really have much of any type of presence because their leader, Stuart Rhodes, is behind bars and he'll remain there now for 18 years. Um, but what we do see are other militia groups that have spread it up across the country, the three percenters. But again, largely, these are splintered groups that do, do not want to be seen as, you know, under federal suspicion by having some kind of central leadership structure. So where does this go from here? Well, we actually have another sentencing later today. There's actually nine defendants total charged in this seditious conspiracy. So we have eight more to go. We have Kelly Meggs. He's the leader of the Florida chapter of the Oath Keepers. The government is seeking 21 years for Meggs, which would also be the longest sentence um, handed down. But I expect, you know, now that we've seen Judge Mehta sentence Rhodes to below what the government had asked for, which was 25 years, he only got 18. I expect that we'll probably see Megs get below that 21-year recommendation. And then over the next week, there will be about two defendants a day coming from these uh, the seditious conspiracy indictment coming in to also face their sentences. Um, basically, the, the shortest recommendation from DOJ for one of these defendants is 10 years. So they are really trying to hammer home that this was one of the most serious conspiracies that they've uh, indicted in connection with the January 6th attack, and they will urge Judge Mehta to hand down the most serious sentence for each of these defendants. I bet the Capitol Police had something to say about this when they testified. 
Yes, yesterday, uh, members of the Capitol Police, including, uh, as you know, Harry Dunn, uh, t testified in court just to kind of give a victim impact statement expressing the serious of n seriousness of what took place on January 6th. And Judge Mehta, in his remarks, actually said straight to Stuart Rhodes, the people who are breaking the oaths are you. It's the, the people who are keeping the oaths were the people who spoke in this court yesterday and, and expressed real admiration for what Capitol Police did on that day, which he said could have gotten so much worse if they did not act the way that they did. He, he described January 6th as one of the blackest days in American history. Um, and so I think that, you know, what we have heard from Harry Dunn, who's been outspoken, he's, repeared, he's appeared repeatedly at this court to urge uh, people to take serious what happened on January 6th that day and the seriousness of what he experienced himself. Hopefully this will send a bigger message to far-right militia groups when they plan to do something like this again, which hopefully will never happen. Alex Mallon, thank you so much. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.